I'm Jeannie Dunn and I'm a PhD student here at the Organic Geochemistry Unit in the University of Bristol. I'm taking part in Soapbox Science because it's something that I feel really passionately about. There are nowhere near enough women in science. So what the event aims to do is to increase the visibility of women scientists. And it also gives us the opportunity to bring our science to the general public in a very accessible format. My talk is called Milking It and I'll be talking about how we can extract very small molecules from ancient pots used by humans thousands of years ago. And what we can tell from these small molecules is the sort of products that they were processing and eating. We can identify things like milk products, meat, fish and also plants. So what we do is we're given lots of potsherds by archaeologists who've excavated them from sites. These pots are the first non-biodegradable items that humans make. And what's remarkable is that when they use these pots to process their food, fats migrate into the vessel wall. They're very, very tiny little molecules. A million of them would fit on one grain of sand, and that's why they're able to fit within the vessel fabric. And we take a very, very small piece of the pot and crush it up and extract these molecules. And we can use various chemical techniques to look at these and tell us exactly what sort of things people were processing in their pots. And based on different physiology of ruminant and non-ruminant animals, we can tell whether the fats we're looking at originate from either dairy fats, in other words, they come from the milk of the animal, or whether it comes from the flesh of the animal. What's really exciting about this is that this is answering one of the big archaeological questions, which is when people stopped uh, living a hunter-gatherer lifestyle and started settling down and, and living this agricultural lifestyle. And this has enabled us to identify that around about 10 to 12,000 years ago, no humans could drink milk past weaning. We were all lactose intolerant. So what we see is a remarkable example of selection in action. Milk is so beneficial to humans, it contains all the food groups, um, fats, protein and carbohydrates, and it's also very good for bone health. So within around about the space of, we think, about a thousand years, Europeans evolved what's called the lactase persistence gene, which allows about 80, I think it's about 85% of northern Europeans to be able to drink milk. I'm quite unusual in that I came to science quite late as a mature student. I actually used to be an accountant, but um, I wanted to follow my passion. I wanted to do the thing that I love. And that's why I decided to get involved with Soapbox Science, because I want to emphasise to young girls and women that it isn't ever too late to go back into science. 